think a lot of students have just gotten another sense of how to belong and how to create relationships outside of what were the traditional avenues. And a lot of my students talk about how they feel safe in the eSports program, and that's their family, that's their community. And I think that eSports gives kids a future that they might otherwise not have. Man, I wish that had been available when I was in high school. Hello everyone and welcome to the Play vs. Texas Rocket League Championship. My name is Perino. I am joined once again by my co-caster, Audio. Audio, once more we have some great Rocket League coming up for everyone today. All good things must come to an end, Perino. And unfortunately, this is the last day that we have. But what a note to end it on. We're going to be headed to Texas for the Play vs. Rocket League Championship, as you mentioned. And we have Grapevine High School taking on Friendship High School. And interesting thing, both these teams have a very similar and very impressive record. They absolutely do. Both titans of this state coming in a undefeated match record and a perfect game record for both That's of them. Insane. Neither of these teams have lost a game until today. Only one team in this best of seven final will be crowned a victor. Someone has to lose. Yeah, let's take a look at that bracket, how these two teams got here to the championship. You can see there at the end, Grapevine Varsity taking on Friendship Epic Gamers. Friendship went through the Cinco Ranch Esports and the Platypus Squad. Scrape fine. Took down Colley, er, Colleyville Heritage and Big, er, sorry, LHS Scythe. And remember, like you said, not only have they not lost a series, not a single individual game. Rocket League plays best of seven series. It's first to four wins. So each one of these squads have won every single match 4-0 across the board from start to finish. But there's only going to be one spot for the champion. And one of these teams, one of their O has got to go. Yeah, it's such an incredible dynamic, right? Because even the first game, right, someone has to lose. There are no ties in That's Rocket League for anyone one. wondering. So someone has to lose the first game. So how do you deal with losing for the first time? You have to have, obviously, a ton of faith that you're going to do well, right? Clearly, both teams have done beyond what can ever be expected to get to this point. But you know how good the other team is. It's the same exact record. I wonder how dealing with losing for the first time in the grand final will affect both of these squads. And beyond that, because both these teams have a perfect record, obviously you can conclude that they've never played each other. Because yes, otherwise that wouldn't be the case. And so coming into this match, you've been playing against people who, for the most part, I mean, we didn't get to watch every single game, but it seems like it was pretty heavy-handed. It went one way, not the other. And so both these teams will have to finally play against a team where they might have to play from behind. That might not be a scenario that they're used to. We could just see a massive uh, swing here. Although these are both Titans, I wouldn't be surprised to see a 4-1 you know, or a 4-2 coming in because as soon as you lose that first game and your kind of game plan of just dominating has been shattered, it can be hard to come back from that. It certainly can be. And the other element of it as well is just simply respecting your opponents. To what level... Are you going to say, okay, I know the other team is very good, so I'm going to play a bit more cautious because I respect their ability to score? You may not have seen that previously in your other league games. You may have simply rolled over the other competition. You're not going to be able to do that now. I wonder how each team you know, determines a level of respect for the opposition and how that affects the play style. Yeah, how are you going to change the way you play the game when normally you send all three attackers up? Right. Don't really worry about those shots coming back at your own goal. You're used to making all of your passes flawlessly, not being contested around those corners. All of a sudden, that contestion starts coming through. Those you know 80% chance shots that you're now taking are now 30 40%. And if you kind of lose that rhythm, it can be hard to regain it. So it'll be interesting to watch these squads, not only that level of respect they give over to their opponents at the start, but how that adapts throughout the game. Because I think that is what's truly going to separate a great team, or, or a good team from a great team, is how you can adapt to a new opponent, a new play style. Oh, absolutely. It's one of the marks of any competition right is at the end you you work through an entire season you work through a playoff bracket you grind through all of these games and you're now at a point where okay four more wins and we win the whole shebang right we're going to be the rocket league you know state champion here in texas 
I just am so excited to see two great teams going at it. I, I love the dynamic. I love the narrative, the storyline that we have for this series. It should be so much fun just to watch. Yeah, and we might have the start of a buttering rivalry on our hands, too, because Texas now in its first year of eSports, thanks to Play Versus, being able to set this one up. I mean, and in the very first year, we see two star-studded rosters just making it all the way to the end with the perfect run. Coming back next year, if both these teams you know return to form and are able to make it to the finals once again, this could be a yearly spectacle where we get to see these Titans clash. It certainly could be. And on that note, we also want to give a special shout out to Kyle Berger from Grapevine Colleyville. He has been so important and instrumental in building this play versus league here in Texas. So we want to give a special shout out to him. He has done an incredible job in getting everything working and getting everything good to go because this is the culmination of that effort now. This is all of the work put into one final best of seven. Yeah, and thanks as well to Play Versus for helping set this up. It is really because of them that we're able to bring you this broadcast today. They've been doing phenomenal work all over the nation, setting up esports leagues in multitudes of states. And I mean, this isn't just some after school club or activity where a couple of friends get together and play some rocket powered soccer. Uh, as cool as that is. I mean, th this is really uh, a sport now. You know, it's a high school athletic competition. And, I mean, you've got leagues, you've got coaches, support staff. I mean, there's these all the full seasons you can see culminating all in this championship right here. And we're going to get into it. Friendship High School versus Grapevine. Yes, we certainly are. And a cautious start coming out from both teams here. Game number one. I think we both anticipated this. They're gonna have to get a feel for one another just to see the level of play and how they can react to such stiff competition now. Yeah, these first couple minutes are crucial for identifying how your opponent will play the game and how you're gonna have to react. If you could come out with an early goal, it can really damage your opponent's mental. So although both these teams just feeling it out, I would not be surprised to see some aggression coming through as friendship made a, a pretty nice shot at that goal there. Yes, and the first real chance, I believe, coming out here for Friendship High School. And they pick up another one right away. Destrek just finding that on the opposite post. Great setup by his uh, teammate. Just sneaks that one through into the corner. And you can see Grapevine, they were in the goal, but they didn't expect that turnaround. No, they did not. Really smart from friendship there just to have someone waiting on that back post they have had the better of this early possession this sort of exploratory period and they might want to try and build on that yeah they've been playing this nice and slow and they're gonna sneak it in once again Meek is able to find it that and one set up and knocked down by himself it is not a Meek finish here as he just casually rolls that into the near How post. Could you? I, I, I had to. It, the opportunity was there and I took it. The same way that opportunity fell for Meek right there to put that through. Very nicely done by him. Yeah, great start here for Friendship off to a 2-0 lead less than two, a minute and a half into the game. Death is able to find a nice save as he's going to bring it back into possession for Friendship who are definitely coming out here in force in game number one. Yes, they certainly are. They have had the better of the possession here. Grapevine really haven't had a chance to attack, although that could change in a moment. Of course, so dynamic this game. It is right now in the corner of Friendship's side. Dets is going to pass it upfield. Me grabbing a little bit of boost. Possession is going to go up into the air. Goes fluff, knocked away into the corner. That was a good stop there on the aggressive drive from Grapevine. But they are going to be trying it once again. Three-man strong defense. Meek going to clear it out of there. Yes, and even though Grapevine had some good possession, though, they didn't really generate any. Oh, look at this. What a great pass to the middle, but his teammate just not quite there. Meek will have to reset that one. One of the dangers of having all that possession is if you don't generate good shot attempts, it's not useful, that one nearly, though, coming in from a very tough angle. Going across the side, Outlaw not able to find the connection. Detz will clear that one with the help of Vaticus. Starting to dribble it up the field. Good center off the backboard. It's going, and it's not good. It goes just high off that crossbar. Yes, and Destrek really doing a nice job there, just jumping up, making that defensive play. It's going to allow Friendship to break out. Detz is able to find it. Great pass 
there from his teammate off the crossbar and into the goal. Yes, and you can see just that moment of hesitation for Grapevine on defense, trying to establish who's going to take the possession out of the corner. But Destrek finds the ball, finds the crossbar. It bounces right back down to him. That is a convincing three-goal lead now for Friendship. And now Grapevine have to find something to equalize this. We talked about the mental state of these players coming in. Never have lost a game this entire season. Now Grapevine down three to nothing here with two minutes left in regulation. Yes, it is certainly a difficult spot to be in, but not impossible. Still two minutes left in this game. That is plenty of Good time for Good save by goals. Meek, but Outlaw able to sneak it past two. Atticus will be there on the stop. He's Gonna pass it off to his players, and that one is good! As Austin Frosty is able to find the connection off the nice pass from his teammate. And this is such a nice play from Fluff. He gets up high on the wall, makes the early challenge, bounces right back in to Osti, crossbar and in. You love to see that. Perfect shot placement, and that's the start that they need, Grapevine High School. Now they can start working to close this gap. Two more goals, two minutes in. Not undoable in the least as these are incredibly talented players here. See, a nice shot onto the goal, off the crossbar. Meek goes up to the top, and that one almost gets blocked, but it sneaks by the defender. And Meek does such a nice job here. It's a great pass from Destrick. He gets it by the both defenders going on the crossbar. Nobody to defend high, and Meek just so casually, right? Just dropping that ball right in. Gets up high, gets up early, and friendship there. Immediately right back at it. Yeah, really bringing that lead back into Friendship's favor once again. Three goal deficit for Grapevine. If they were to pull this one around, they would have to do it quick. Collision going to come through, and that buys space for Friendship to put another in the net. Yes, and this is a really great play for Meek. Working out of his own corner. Look at that soft little touch in the middle. Destrek will take that every single time. You see that great pass coming out in chat. It was all set up on the assist, but give Destrick credit for the goal. Yeah, Friendship are starting to get a little bit of a aggression going now. As you can see, they're not only attacking the ball, but attacking the defender straight outright. Nobody there to block that shot because of the demolition. And this one is looking more and more like it is going to be Friendship off to an early lead. Yes, it certainly seems as though they will be taking game number one here. Although this one from Grapevine. Great dribble from Fluff Up, but he actually, he flips oh. it up and they're not able to find a connection. The shot number three coming in, the block is there. Four blocks in a row. That was just a barrage of shots from Grapevine, but stone wall defense coming in from Friendship. In a great defensive stand from Friendship, simply not allowing Grapevine any chance whatsoever to come back into this game. They have their four goal lead and they will defend the wall. That they will, 30 seconds remaining, and this one is all but wrapped up. Demolition coming through from Osti Frosty, taking out some of that aggression on the players. See a little bit of a flip there, Atticus finds the save. Great find, they're gonna be looking towards game number two. Thankfully for them, there's plenty of Rocket League left to play. Oh, there certainly is. This is only one game of a potential seven. So more than enough time to make some adjustments. Just trying to build some confidence. That one is going to go in. Austin Frost, the last second buzzer beater, will help his team feel a little bit better going into the next match. It's not going to make an impact in this game, but it will make an impact in this series, I believe. Just establishing, OK, we can score on these guys. We know how to do it. So we're going to have to take some of that skill and strategy we saw right there into game number two. Ooh, looking for the kickoff goal, but as the ball touches the ground, it will be the Friendship Epic Gamers picking up the first win in this series. Yes, a very commanding performance from Friendship here. Their offensive pressure, we talk about it a lot in these series, just so, so good. When you can establish possession and control of the ball consistently in your opponent's half, it is exhausting to try and defend that for too long. Really nice passing play using all three members from Friendship High School. I thought they played really, really well. Absolutely, and hopefully we'll get to see you know a little bit of a fight back from their opponents here in game number two because we talked uh, again and again about the mental state of these players. When you haven't lost a single game all season, now no longer true for Grapevine. They have lost one game 
but that doesn't mean the series is is anywhere close to over as it is still three in a row that Friendship have to win if they want to come up with the perfect season. Going for the entirely perfect season will be so, so difficult, but they're gonna get an early chance here. Meek trying to find a teammate. Oh, it's just turned aside. That was a good aggressive look from Friendship. You can tell their confidence slowly growing here in this game. That's just gonna knock it out of that corner. Aussie Frosty though wants to keep it there. Meek will finally clear the ball, looking for a dribble. It's gonna bounce off the backboard. Nobody quite there to respond. No, in Friendship, notice there, all three members just up on the attack. It's how they sustain that pressure. They just have to be careful. They kill themselves, get broken by it. Great aerial block there from Detz. That one was headed right for the goal. Now Atticus will be attempting to clear the ball. Osti Frosty, a nice look. Gonna be off the crossbar. Can he find the completion? Just too far to the left. He had the right idea, but just the execution not quite there. I think if he gets up a little bit more to the left, he can bring that in, but it's not an easy look. You have to try it when you get the chance, but that is never a guarantee to hit that shot. Especially on low boost, that one was so incredibly difficult, so no fault to him for missing what was the potential of an incredible shot. Now, though, we are about a minute and a half in. No scores so far. Meek almost puts Friendship on the board. Just too high. And just notice the patience here from Grapevine High School. They're just, they're taking their time and they're waiting for Friendship to really push. I think their adjustment is they're trying to hit them on that counter attack. Okay, you're sending everyone up, that's fine, but if we get one good look, we're gonna score on a counter. Ooh, that good look might have come through. Fluff Wuff gonna go up into the top of the goal, send that one away. Like you Austin. said, this is a very defensive look from these teams, that one. One of the few shots we've seen so far this game. Another one coming through. Grapevine finally starting to find their footing here in game number two. Osti Frosty will be able to turn that one away. Great defensive play, just leaving that one member back in the goal. Yes, really nice positioning from Osti there. Recognizing it is a pure 1v1, he knows that he can contest pretty much anything that comes his way. He has the whole net to defend, but he was in a really nice spot. That he was. Low scoring game still here. Two and a half minutes left in regulation. This team just kind of volleying back and forth, looking for that one mistake, that one opportunity to look for that shot. Fluff Wuff, great drive off the ceiling. He's able to keep that one in the opposing end. Atticus is gonna knock it away. Could have been a beautiful setup. Oh, here goes Outlaw, but Meek is able to stop it. Outlaw in, a, in the good spot there trying to find this opening goal, but just not quite able to make that final read. It's so close for Grapevine. They've had a couple of really nice looks. As a pinch coming out, they could be really dangerous. Well, that was a great shot. Lots of momentum behind that ball, but not giving enough time for the rest of the attackers to get in position. This one gonna be sent away by Outlaw, and it's just been clear after clear for either of these Ooh. sides. Fluff Wub coming in close, and there you go, Outlaw 7-7-7 is able to put the first goal in the net. Look at the recovery from Fluff here. Gets right back on the ground and in a perfect spot to dish out the pass. Outlaw with enough faith to believe that ball's coming back into the middle. It is a great opener for Grapevine High School. Can they continue to defend 90 seconds? They have the lead now. And now the pressure is on for Friendship. If they want to keep their undefeated season alive, they have to come out fast with a uh, retaliation. They certainly do, but Grapevine have defended so well in this game. I don't know if they'll get the chances, and now Grapevine can really dictate the pace of this game here. Yeah, they can just sit back and play defensive if they so choose, but the best defense is a great offense, and that is the philosophy. Grapevine taking it in here, game number two. They have their pedal to the metal. They certainly do, and I love the fearlessness. Just saying, okay, we're going to play our game and we're going to win if we do it. They Ooh, have to be careful though. That was dangerously close to the defender off the field. It was a man advantage for Friendship. But not able to find the completion. 40 seconds left, they're looking for a touch. That one, so close by Atticus. Atticus might want that one back. I think he really could have scored there, but the placement not good enough. 30 seconds, got to be all out from Friendship here. It does, if they want to send this one to overtime, 
Atticus, he has the look here. Outlaw is going to buy some space. If that had gotten past him, it was almost all hope lost for Grapevine. Yes, but still, the attack presses on. This, this one, one high. Might look good. Can they complete it? No. Just 10 seconds left, and Grapevine going to be or tying this one up one to one as this ball touches the ground. And that'll be it. Neither team can claim the undefeated season here. And it is something that we anticipated right in this matchup. We knew how good both of these teams were coming into this. I don't think either of us would have predicted a 4-0 sweep. I love the answer, though, from Grapevine High School. They said, okay, fine, you want to build this pressure? We can do the same thing. We're going to sit back, and they're going to sit on the counter. Fluff had an amazing individual play on that transition, follows up his own touch, sets up the only goal of the game. Yeah, absolutely. That, that was a much different look than we saw in game number one. It was just score after score after score. I love that Grapevine was able to take a step back and say, let's focus on fundamentals. Make sure that these you know, high-quality shots are going to be a little bit trickier for friendship. That's such a nice pass! And Outlaw, he gets the most fortunate touch. It bounces right back to him. That's an opener for Grapevine. What an opener it is, is Outlaw, you can see right there on the backboard, straight into him. Calculated indeed, brother, calculated indeed. I love that quick check coming out. I don't think he meant to really put it back to himself off the post, but anything that works is good here. They will absolutely take that goal. I'll give him the benefit of a doubt. That was just a 400 <laughs> IQ play. He saw 10 steps ahead of his opponents, and now Friendship are in the back seat. They had to come out with another goal. Last game, Grapevine were able to completely shut them out. They never got a single good shot off. No, and they'll be looking to continue that here as once you find that early goal within the first 10, 15 seconds of the game, it changes the dynamics so quickly as this one is dangerous, but no follow-up for Friendship High School. Yeah, Meek just way up there. He was alone on the offense and nobody to follow up on that play. Bit of a missed defense there by Atticus. Going to give... Great find a chance to retain the possession. Atticus battling it out in the corner, 1v2, looking to find an edge over its opponents. I like that from Austin Frosty there, just slowing it down on the transition, recognizing he doesn't have a ton of boost, but he doesn't have to just clear the ball away. That one could have been turned in by Outlaw, but saved Some again. Great aerial defense. You can saw Friendship spent a lot of time isolated in the air. This one hanging in front of the goal. Dez is able to knock it away, though, out of the danger zone. Yes, really smart from Dez there, just recognizing that he had an opportunity to immediately contest and just turn that ball aside. There was an attacker looking to score. This one looking good, comes off the crossbar. Not a favorable bounce. Outlaw can't find an angle. And off the transition now, Friendship looking to establish some offense of their own. Dez is going to go up. This one might be sneaking into the pocket. Osti comes up underneath and turns it away. Can Atticus complete on this one? A couple of really great oh shots no. from Megan. No! Osti is, or Atticus is able to find the completion, but Grapevine scoring on themselves. Oh, and this is so unfortunate. It's the right idea. He's the player there coming up onto that sidewall, just looking to clear that ball into the next dimension just gets the timing a little bit wrong, turns it into his own net. That is a really unfortunate way to concede an equalizer. What a break here from Friendship, though. They now at least have a look at overtime as long as no more goals go through. And maybe this is what they needed to get a little bit of confidence back. Yes, you'll take any break that you can get. All the goals count, right? There's no bad goals in Rocket League. Anything that goes in is good as Outlaw finds one. Outlaw is going to make up for her that uh, previous mistake as Grapevine are able to find another one goal lead. And I actually really like the finish from Outlaw there. He uses that flip cancel to generate that shot power, just going straight into the net, no saving that one. He will be happy, I believe, to make amends for his own goal. Austin Frosty going to take this one up the wall, put it in the center. Dats is down the contestion. No shot for Grapevine. Fluff with a lot of power behind that one. But just a little too close on the cut. It's Fluff Wuff. Now again, they're just passing it back and forth. This is where Grapevine are in their element. One goal ahead, they can play a defensive style. 
have these long passes where friendship never get a good look. Oh, that's such a nice touch. Are you kidding me? What a great goal for Grapevine here. Absolutely phenomenal. Outlaw, he goes up and he just barely taps it. He puts it right in the perfect spot, comes straight down. It is, that was, I cannot say it enough, that was such an individually great play from Outlaw there. Used every ounce of his boost, but that touch is so soft. He almost puts it in on his own, but it bounces off the crossbar. Oh, and they come out with another one. Outlaw, the hat trick here this game. Outlaw's he's able to come in with an easy goal. Outlaw has almost scored every single goal in this game, really on four, but he will certainly take that one there. So great find. Score friendship goal. <laughs> exactly. Well, you can't score every goal in the game. You have to. Extra credit scoring a goal <laughs> for your opponent. He just can't get enough of those great shots. And sometimes he gets a little confused as to which goal he should be shooting at. Well, but he will certainly be happy that he has three on the net of friendship. As Grapevine, they've really done a good job in this game of just finding their offense, and it's really clicking for them. They've had these really nice individual touches that have allowed great scoring chances. So I think they'll be very pleased. Got to hold on for another 90 seconds, but they're looking good. Yeah, three goals in 90 seconds is not an easy feat. And Grapevine have the advantage of being able to take this one nice and slow. Friendship, on the other hand, playing against the clock, they need to pick up the tempo. Yes, and notice how Grapevine is just sitting back now, and they are just clearing that ball as far as they can away from their net. They are more than happy to just sit, apply the pressure where they can, and wait this one out. Slow and steady wins the race. This one almost finding the goal. That one was headed straight for the net. Osti, though, is able to get back in time, knock it aside. Now Dett's going up for the aerial, taken away by Osti. Hanging to the danger zone there. Meek going to knock it away. And I like the play from Grapevine. They, they're they trying to generate some really nice offense, but when they don't get the look that they want, notice they just all rotate out. They say, OK, that's fine. 45 seconds, 30 seconds. No matter what, three goals, we're looking good. We can just settle it down, ride it out. Dets does have the ball all alone here, looking for the setup. But Outlaw comes in from the side. He's able to clear it off to the right. Yes, really nice look from Outlaw. Just trying to clear the danger. Really, really smart play from Grapevine. They have played the end of this game really, really well, fundamentally. And with five seconds left in a three-goal lead, that will put Grapevine up 2-1 over this series as this ball hits the ground on its final bounce. Grapevine Varsity coming back after that rough game one and solidifying, them, solidifying themselves a lead. Yes, and it's the defense that has really come through for them. Zero goals allowed in game two. And honestly, only the you can own goal. say zero goals allowed in game. Uh, you know, th they allowed one. They said, okay, we're going to give you one, but you're not allowed to score yourselves. So really only one goal conceded across two games. I love that they are just absorbing this pressure now. It, it may just be a nerve factor. They come out in the first game. They didn't have the greatest of looks, but now they're settled in and they're playing lockdown defense. It's really been the change here and why they're up two to one. They absolutely are. If they were to take this game home, that would put them at series point to win it all. Unfortunately, that first game still keeping them from that perfect record. Oh. That one goes a little bit too slowly backwards, sets it up for me. Yes. And this is so unfortunate from the last defender. That half flip not going to come through. Just can't get an effective touch on the ball. Meek sees that rolling across. That is as open as you'll find it in this series. Yeah, Osti Frosty hitting the chat with the whoops. He realizes he made a mistake. But great fun. They've been in this position before. They you know, are, are very adept at kind of cutting their losses, making sure that lead does not grow. Outlaw have to be careful now, but he'll get bailed out there. Just didn't have the boost really to make a play on that ball. But Bit of a ring around the rosy. Somewhat, but it'll still allow Grapevine to just, you know, get back on defense and start rotating into good positions. Oh, Ooh. fluff of great shot there out of the back corner. And this is such a nice challenge in the corner. Look at this. You just get a great pinch between two players. He just fluff. shot out of there. Fluff definitely coming in with that calculated clearance it's it's just straight into your own net there's nothing you can do if you're yeah and that's one of those kind of weird interactions where you saw 
Atticus going for the flip into the goal, but just the interaction of the momentum of the ball and the weird balance gave so much power shot shooting into the back line. There was no chance for Yeah, that, that pinch effect can be so deadly. When two cars collide at the same time with the ball, the ball relying on natural physics just sort of pinches and squeezes out at high velocity. You saw it there. It can be very unpredictable. This friendship looking for another goal. Meek is able to put it in and put them back in the lead. What is not unpredictable is this beautiful touch from Dez. Really doing a nice job getting it past one, getting it past two. Meek on the follow-up from the crossbar. Bounces right back out to him. Friendship had a little bit of an unlucky break. You know, that pinch goal conceding is not ideal, but they have come right back into this. Aussie Frosty coming up with a hot break off the kickoff, but thankfully, Friendship had a defender in place to shut him down. And what a series we have seen so far. I'm so glad this is so close, so competitive, and it's not just a one-sided affair. No, and we absolutely anticipated this. We know the quality of both these teams. Ooh, flip reset me? Almost. He is gonna land on his back there. Take a moment to get his bearings as Friendship are able to clear it off. Ball just kind of hanging around this midfield. A good shot there by Grapevine. Luffwuff is going to put it into position. Outlaw not finding the connection. He was contested as he went up. Oh, and Atticus has to push forward there with zero boost. So dangerous to do so. If he is challenged for that ball, he risks conceding an equalizer. But fortunate there for friendship, they just are able to sort of clear that ball, reset, try it again. Ooh, what a defense there by Meek. Able to grab all the boost, take it away from the defender, and then up over the wall to clear that one out. Put his the team in a position to score. Yes, and I really like the change of pace. Oh, and there it goes. Atticus over, or from Meek, right off the defender into the net. I think this is another own goal. Watch this touch. I think that was going wide. It's very close. You have to try and make a play. It's, it's so difficult to see if that ball is going to bounce in or out off the post. Very, very close. You have to try it. Ultimately, though, turned in, I believe, by Grapevine. Yeah, and just these split-second decisions here from Grapevine. They've been playing oh. a very clean game, and they're going to equalize it right back up. <laughs> Got to say, to their credit, although they've made a fair share of mistakes, they always find a way to make up for them. They certainly do, and what a beautiful response there from Fluff. Just finding a challenge in front of the net. Neither of the friendship defenders had a great touch on that ball. Just finds himself in the right spot, and... Yeah, the, the breaks have been sort of, you know, going both ways for these teams. It just makes it so challenging to stick with your game plan, though. You get these unexpected goals in weird spots, but you take them all. Atticus is going to find the stop here. Meek going to try to clear it. Fluff Buff keeping it on Friendship's side of the field. Now a one goal lead for Friendship, just cresting two minutes left in regulation. Both these teams looking to come out with a advantage here. Friendship would love to extend their lead, but Grapevine, they just want to tie it up so they can have a chance at overtime. Yes, they certainly do, and it could happen, but that's a great save from Dez. What a save there by Dez, and it goes all the way back, almost rolls into the goal. Dez now going to go up. He's looking for Meek. There's the shot. There's the score, and Friendship will solidify their lead. A really great sequence of play from Friendship. They get an incredible save on their own end. They transition out. They find the passing play. Meek getting all the way around that ball, just squeezing it into the near post. Really, really nice from Friendship. And the margins on that shot. It was inches away from that defender and barely made it into the goal as is. What an incredibly well-placed shot for me. So precise from Friendship. They have to be really happy with how they played that. That should give them a ton of confidence to see out this game. Two goal lead, about a minute and 15 seconds left. You have to have faith now. That was a really nice play. And Grapevine, they're starting to feel the pressure. They have to come out with two goals in the next minute and now make it three as Meek puts another on the board. And so, so nice here, Meek, just getting that pass in, working it by both defenders. He actually gets one last touch on the goal line there. The, the game will give him credit for that goal, but I like that because he really did set that up for his teammate. And yeah, now it's it's cruise control for Friendship. Friendship look like they're probably gonna even up this series two to two. Great save there by Outlaw, just shoving the ball up above the goal, making sure nobody could come down on it. Atticus. Gonna get back on defense for Friendship. 
and keep that lead from swinging away. Yes, and if you notice the direction on the touch there from Atticus, playing it into the own corner, it's so smart. He gets a really powerful touch, but the ball is in a very safe spot. Even though it's in your own half, it's difficult to score from those corners. So you'll notice friendship, they'll just take their time. They'll work it out of these corners. Ooh, great angle, though, on the ball, just sitting in front of the goal. Fluff Wuff is finally able to find the touch and assist from Austi Frosty to set that play. So it makes it doable now for a grapevine, right? Because now it's just two goals in 30 seconds. It's not impossible. This game could still go their way, but they need a goal early in this sequence. Yeah, you're looking for an early goal and possibly a good look off kickoff as well. And this could have been it. There was a nice open look for friendship there. Now hanging in front of Grapevine's goal, just sitting there waiting oh, for no. someone to tap it in. And it is going to be Dets that finds that touch. And Grapevine just not able to make the clearance here. The ball sitting in front of their own net. Nobody really finding that touch. A bump there from Atticus will take out the last defender. And that is... That'll be the final nail that, in the coffin for Grapevine in game number four. Three goal lead in 15 seconds. I mean, theoretically, it could be done, but it'd be nothing short of a miracle here for Grapevine with the timer ticking down. Five seconds left. It's looking like Friendship really giving us a series and equaling this one up. <laughs> that was almost a really nice goal to end it. Credit the defender, not conceding another one, but a phenomenal showing from Friendship High School in this game. Let's talk about their defense. So strong in the early sequences of this game, it allowed them to establish possession in their half, and they built up those plays to score, just taking the ball from coast to coast. Yeah, not to mention, unfortunately, we saw a great five with a couple of uh, questionable defensive plays. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But you have to capitalize, right? You yeah, absolutely. Wonderful job by Friendship to take those goals and really build momentum off of them. You know, build up an aggressive, confident offense. But you gotta think, if Grapevine had short up those mistakes just a little bit, we might be in a different scenario. We might be, but I love the response from Friendship. They really took it to Grapevine in game number four, so we're getting game five underway now. This is for a series point here. This is such a critical moment as Destrek. He's able to find the first goal of the game, not 30 seconds in. Great assist there by Atticus, just comes up the wall, sends it over to the middle textbook. It certainly is, and I and I realize now as I look at that full name, it's Destruction, so, ah. I, you know, well, the spelling, took me a little the, bit. The spelling but, threw me off. I was afraid to mispronounce it, but we will now go with Destruction. Well, having that clear-cut open chance has cleared up some pronunciation on his name there, so <laughs> he will take that opening goal in friendship, just continuing where they left off in that previous game, but wow. this is nice. Wow, Fluff Wuff comes in with a hot pass and he's able to take it right into the net. Yes, look at this touch from Outlaw. He sees Fluff all the way up. Destruction, no chance on that one. He didn't have any time to respond there. It's a perfect pass. That touch from Outlaw is so, so nice. Puts it in front of his teammate who is already forward. Very, very clinical finish there. Just no chance for the attacker. It's really nice from great line. Absolutely, just from the backfield to the net. What a play from them. They're going to even up the score one to one. Game five going to be the most you know, contested game we've had all series. These teams stuck at two to two in a series score. The winner of this will be one game away from the play versus Texas championship. Yes, so pivotal now to find this next goal here. Both teams are going to be looking to establish that lead again. And they're just feeling each other out a little bit. Nobody wants to make the mistake, right? Nobody wants to concede the easy one. You have to make the other team work for it. Ooh, that one was looking good, but Atticus there on the stop. And what an important thing to go into the potential last game of the series with the advantage. If you're the team that has to win two in a row, it can be a little bit stressful, have that extra pressure. So just for the mental game, both these teams really want to win this one. Oh, they absolutely do. And you'll just notice how it slows down a little bit, right? Oh, but that could have been a great chance for Osti Frosty. I don't think he expected the ball to come back to him there. Yeah, didn't quite have the angle. Looked a little bit shocked himself that he did have that shot. Fluff Wuff, great use of the flips to give him momentum to get back onto defense. And he'll rejoin his team, help clear this ball away right off the back wall. 
It's kept in line by Meek. The destruction coming through. They do have a slight man advantage for a few seconds. Ooh, that was dangerous. One still. going toward the goal. Destruction is able to turn it away, and we will still remain one to one. Atticus there with the ceiling shot. Wazi has a go. nice look. Can Meek get back? Yes, he can. What a save for Friendship. Yes, you have to just go all the way back to try and make that save. Pure one-on-one -on -one defending there. Really nice job to turn it away. And we continue to stay tied in this game. And this has kind of been the stories of most of the series. It's just this back and forth. Both these teams in a stalemate for so long. And it's those small mistakes, those small opportunities that allow either side to get out to an advantage. Right now, Austin Frosty looking to create one of those opportunities for his team as he sends it off to the middle. Nobody there to respond, and so Friendship will now get their chance to find a look. Yes, but Friendship so low on boost. Ooh, I don't that know was going to be convert. hanging there in front of the goal. It is popped back up. It was Meek not able to get there quick enough. And it's just the lack of boost. Oh, a but that bit could more. look good. He's able to get oh. it past the defender. It once again just hanging in that danger zone. Atticus is able to bring it home. And so much pressure coming out from Friendship High School here. They had a couple of clean looks, just not able to find it. But Atticus on that one will not miss. He comes in all the way from that left side. Ball going back across. It's a practically open net for him. Friendship, I believe, taking a, a bit of a sigh of relief there. They had so many good looks. They needed to come away with a goal. And it can feel so fresh with oh. that ball just hanging there. But Fluff Wop, he is able to equalize and say, nah, -uh, we are not losing this one. Let's see if you can see it on the replay. Watch Destruction just absolutely taken out of the net there. That physical play from Grapevine, we haven't really seen it that often in this series, but just a rapid, rapid answer from them. They are not going anywhere. Outlaw getting the uh, uncredited assist on that play as he removed the defender from the equation. And now, great find, evening that score up. Going to be looking to get a uh, lead for themselves here in this final minute of play. It is hanging in front of the goal. Osti Frosty is able to put it in. What an incredible turnaround from Grapevine High School. They were down in this game, but they immediately come back with not one, but two to retake the lead. 60 seconds now. This game has been so back and forth. Friendship, can they find another? That's what they're going to be looking for here. Aussie Grossi, good look on the kickoff. Atticus able to get up into the air and defend that one. And Friendship need to come up huge here in the next 50 seconds to equalize this. Give themselves a shot at the overtime. Outlaw says, no, you don't. That is a two-goal lead now for Grapevine. And Atticus, just in such a difficult spot, manages to take it away from the first attacker. But the pressure from Grapevine High School, they were just absolutely all over him. Nowhere to go. He did his absolute best to clear that away. But just in a 2v1, you can't always make the stop. Oh, the outlaw. He was looking to add insult to injury there. Thankfully, Atticus turned it away. Great find some explosive changes coming through from this squad in the second half of this game. Yes, and for how tense and slow-paced the beginning of this game, when the ending of this game has really been an explosive showing, as you mentioned, from Grapevine High School, just doing everything in their power to put that ball on frame. They managed to find the goals, and I believe they'll find the game with it. Just 10 seconds left to go, two goals for Friendship. It would be nothing short of a miracle for them to succeed here. Austin Frosty gonna turn that one away as Meek looks for the shot. And as that ball hits the ground, so will this game go over to Grapevine. Now one game away from bringing it all home. Yes, and such a resilient performance, I would say, from Grapevine in this game. Going down not once, but twice, having to battle back, but then at the end of the game, they took it over. So much pressure, so many shots, so many passing plays in their opponent's third, they managed to find this game. Yeah, and uh, an amazing showing from them. And you can see, once they started to shore up some of those defensive mistakes, uh, you know, they had those couple of goals on themselves. Uh, once that stopped happening, 
able to come out just fine. I mean, the early game was a little rough. There was some amazing shots by Friendship, but Grapevine kept a level head, and that's what I love about this team, the tenacity. Even these high-pressure situations, they're still able to come up clutch. Well, they absolutely are, but if they want to continue to come up clutch, they have to win either Game 6 here or Game 7 after. They will have two chances on it. Grapevine High School, one win away from the Texas final championship. And friendship backs against the walls. They have to be perfect from here on out. If this game does not go their way, they will be going home in second place. An incredible feat in its own right, but you know they want that trophy. Oh, they absolutely do. We've talked so much about their stellar seasons. Neither of these teams want to come in with a perfect record and lose the last game of the season. But it has to happen to someone. Grapevine with the advantage, but under some pressure here. As they do this ball hanging around the top of the goal on Grapeside's side of the map. It is, is going to be cleared away. Friendship now, once again, on the defense. As Fluff up, he's able to bring it up over the top. Turned away by Meek. Oh, this, this one, it's just dangerous. hanging in front of that goal. Osti Frosty able to find the incredible angle and sneak that one by two defenders. And Meek just not getting a ton of power. Atticus trying to come across. Neither Look player really that finding. Play. Just that mid-air twist by Osti in the, in the face of two friendship members and is still able to find the goal. Yes, and I think Friendship will want some of those defensive touches back. Neither player there finding a ton of power on their touches. It allows Austin Frosty to come across and make that play. So credit to him for scoring. Grapevine now, they're in the driver's seat. That they are. All they have to do is hold on to this. And they will be your 2019 fall champions for the Play versus Texas Rocket League Championship. Seems like a bit much to fit onto a trophy. And, you know, a little bit, but no matter what, I'm sure they will take a trophy of any kind. That one just turned wide. Meek, a great power shot there towards the goal, but as you said, just off the mark. Friendship, though, will have a chance to retry that shot as they do have the possession. Aussie Frost is going to clear it out, bring it into Grapevine's hands. And Grapevine's so good from this position. We've seen them time and time again this series be just one or just a few goals up, and they play this defensive style where Friendship can't find these high percentage looks. No, you have to give them so much credit, Grapevine High School, for the way that they've been playing defense in this series. Even though they've had mistakes, the fundamentals are there, but this one Ooh. has to be... Fluff Wuff, that was scary. He was looking at a fast break there. Aussie, though, he's going to pick it up, and he's going to score. On the fast break here, Grapevine High School just coming out. That demolition so big, Atticus didn't want to challenge right away. He, he waited and waited and waited, but Austi, such a clinical shooter there, knows it's 1v1 and just puts it home. And uh, Atticus seeming like he might have thought he was in the clear with that one. He, de he demoed Fluff Wuff thinking, okay, nobody's going to be able to actually contest me on this ball, but he was wrong. Grapevine are able to find another completion and now 2-0 lead in a very comfortable spot in this potential last game. Outlaw is going to make it even easier as another score is going to bring them up one more. And credit to the midfield challenge there. Notice the Grapevine player getting all the way up, breaking up that transition passing play from Friendship. Just throws their defense into chaos. Outlaw pushes right up, takes that shot. And yes, it's it's very convincing now for a great find. Two minutes to go, three goal lead. It's ideal situation for them. Friendship have to make something happen. They have to make something happen too. They want their championship dreams to stay alive. But great find, such a titan standing in their way. Right now, friendship on the defensive. Just this non-stop barrage by great find. Never even really giving them a chance to be on the same side of the map as the goal, let alone take a shot. Oh, that was such a nice double touch from me. And, oh, the follow-up not there. So unfortunate. What a play there by Meek from Friendship, not having the support from his teammates, though. They just weren't in position. No, Meek found such a beautiful double touch, and it was a great save there. I, I don't know who made it on the half of Grapevine, but the follow-up shot 
just not quite able to go in. I think they really needed that one if they wanted to get back into this one. It's just so much to ask now. 60 seconds, three goals, it's a lot. Destruction gonna be looking to find the goal here. Not able to get in front of the ball, and that one will go left. As now Austin Frosty's gonna have his chance at a dribble downfield. That one hanging up in front of the goal. It's gonna be shot, but just too high off the crossbar. Here comes the rebound, and Austin Frosty finds it in. He certainly does, and Fluff pinging that shot off the crossbar. That bounce going all over the place, but Austin just reads the situation, gets up, puts it home. That should be it for Grapevine High School. They have this game completely under wraps. You gotta think that that's gonna be the game and that's gonna be the series there for Grapevine. Great save there by Meek. Friendship probably just looking to get a couple of goals here at the end. Slow dribble by Meek is able to get it past a few defenders. 30 seconds remaining. This seems almost impossible. Destruction, oh, a great shot, but Aussie Frosty's there. Friendship have had some looks in this game, but the finishing has just not quite been there. Just not able to find the goals. It's a combination of both great defense and just playing from behind. You know you have to be so good in those spots. Credit Grapevine, though. They have just absolutely shut it down when they need to. And with just running out on the timer, as soon as that ball hits the ground, Grapevine High School will be named your 2019 Fall Champions for the Texas Play versus Rocket League season. And give them so much credit. They played so, so well in the end of this series here. The past two games from them, really dominant, coming back from behind in game number five, and then completely taking over in game six. The momentum really swung their way, and they closed out the series. And we were talking about that momentum in game number five. It was a pretty sizable lead there for Friendship High School, but that massive comeback by Grapevine, I feel, really gave them the energy and the boost to take over game number six. And I think it might have even taken away a little bit of the confidence from Friendship High School as well. They had some looks there in that last game. They... They really did have the chances to score. I think when they watch that back, they're going to look at it and say, man, we really could have, you know, clawed back at that gap. But, you know, credit the great defense of Grapevine High School as well. When they needed to, they made some really, really nice stops. All right, let's take a look once more at the bracket. And you can see it is the Grapevine varsity squad sitting there in the throne of the champion. Not completely a perfect season, but they will obviously take their final spot there as the champion. Couldn't quite complete the perfect game record. Both teams, again, we talked about it so much, Two coming games in perfect. Away. So, so close, but they really got put to the test by Friendship High School. Again, I want to give both teams credit. They both played really well. I think it was just a combination of better finishing and better defense in the end for Grapevine it managed to propel them to victory. And the first season of you know esports here down in Texas, thanks to Play Versus, what a way to close it out here with Rocket League. The three or the four to two finish, you couldn't have asked for a better series to watch. It was incredibly competitive, and I'm sure these two teams have a little bit of a rivalry going on after that one. They'll be looking to make their comeback next year. But hey, if you guys out there watching had fun and you want to get your school involved, make sure to head over to Play Versus website now, playversus.com. That's playvs.com. And you can sign up for their spring 2020 season right now. That's going to wrap it up for us here on the broadcast test, though. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have been your host, Audio, joined by Perino. We're going to take a short break. Coming up soon, we have League of Legends. Don't go anywhere. In video games, a lot of people tend to think that we're not very good. Sometimes the male players get a little snarky, and sometimes I do have to put them in their place. 1v1 me, bro. Come at me. I was bullied relentlessly in school, so video games became my escape. And eventually I started entering tournaments and making a name for myself. A lot of people thought it was a joke, but I was really excited. I went before our Board of Education and presented the case for eSports. We talked about the benefits of playing video games. You build teamwork, critical thinking skills, problem-solving skills, communication. These are skills that companies are now looking for. 
And also I brought up the child that won $3 million in Fortnite and discussed how students had a future with eSports if they could win money and go to college on scholarships. We made an announcement two days after the board approved and I had about 450 students show up and it was a little overwhelming to think about how am I gonna teach students how to play this very complex game. There are a lot of different types of students in my program. And I have a lot of students who say, you know, they come to school for eSports. They know that they need to do well in class. Otherwise, they're gonna, their teacher will call me and I will come up to their classroom and sit in that class and make sure that they're doing what they need to do. A lot of them are now maybe at B's when earlier they were C's or D's. I had a student graduate last year. He told me that he was gonna drop out, that he didn't like school, school wasn't for him, and then we announced eSports, and that's kinda what saved him, and he graduated and he, now he's in college. That meant a lot to me. I tear up a little bit every time I think about that child. Every school really does need an eSports program simply because, in my personal experience, a lot of these kids that play eSports, for various reasons, they can't play a physical sport. But eSports is just, it's online, it's at the school, it gives students a place where they can feel safe and they belong. Because back in the day when eSports and video games weren't mainstream, you were bullied relentlessly for it. And a lot of my students talk about how they feel safe in the eSports program, and that's their family, that's their community. Being an eSports coach means to me that I have a huge responsibility to these 65 children that are in this program. Despite the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing half the time, they are counting on me to give them guidance in this game so they can win and go to playoffs. It's more than just being a coach, it's being there for students who might not have anybody who's normally there for them. It's about encouraging them, loving them, and showing them that you can do something like this and be good at it and go off and have a future.